lo and behold, some lady came over and she liked my reading. She said, can you come over and teach my family palmistry? Well, I knew if I could teach palmistry, I would really get a handle on the subject. Right, sure. So I went and I started teaching her family palmistry and that was successful after a few weeks. And so I finally decided I would do, uh, I would probably be able to teach palmistry at the University of Washington Experimental College because they didn't know anything about it anyway. So I went over and I volunteered to do that and I gave them a little demonstration and they and I taught there for about 10 years. Wow. And that, of course, you had to learn a lot to do that. And I had to continue to buy books and that. I ended up with a library, something over 200 volumes in palmistry and also picked up a lot of books on uh, forensic uh, science and hand analysis and fingerprints. And I started, and, and I wanted to do as many, read as many hands as I could. So I started doing fairs. I did fairs uh, throughout the United States and into Western Canada uh, from uh, the, uh, on the Pacific coast from uh, San Diego to Vancouver, British Columbia, and uh, all the way through the Midwest and, and all, also places on the East coast from New York down to Florida. I got to see, so I put in my better than thousand, I don't know how many thousands of people I've read over the years. And the thing that struck me when I started reading, I started to find out that the people who had written books on the subject were not just talking wild nonsense, they, they were hitting the nail on the head, if you will, on behavior characteristics. There was more to it than I first thought. And I began to get very serious about it. And it's the same way with readings. And so eventually I got interested in, as I, I wrote a book, my first book was an encyclopedia of palmistry, which required me to go through and, and, and study people. And I found out that this study of fingerprints and that had been going on since about the 1930s. And it was, it was quite quite a history of it. And so I, I wrote a, about it in that book. And then about the time that book came out, I was, wasn't happy with everything I wrote. So I did a, a web page on uh, history of dermatoglyphics and it's still up. Lynn Seal has it posted on her site. And I, I posted that and I got into it and I really got interested in it. Then a lady, a young lady in Southern California called me up and said, can I use your information posted on the web? I said, yeah, fine. I said, why, do you, why are you interested? And she says, well, I have been studying with this lady in Taiwan who is using fingerprints for assessments of children she used to own a kindergarten, a very large kindergarten of about 400. And she was thoroughly dissatisfied with the educational uh, methods used. And she started studying fingerprints and she used them for assessment of children going into school. And she, she claims that if she can see a child before the age of two, she can predict things like this child will learn to read at four, this child won't learn to read till seven. I said, I'd love to meet this lady because, uh, because I could relate to that because when I was a child, I was a reading dyslexic. Hmm. And I actually had one teacher call up my mother at one time said, don't ever bother to uh, push him towards college. He doesn't have the ability. Well, I later got two two degrees and uh, six years of university, and uh, even even was a grader in one one advanced class. But said I had no respect for the, a lot of the teaching methods themselves. I, I was just fortunate uh, that uh, when I was a boy, my father was a newspaper man. We went in England. Uh, right after the war and I went into a private boys school where the class was about the size of 13 and I learned to read. 
but very slowly. I learned to read fast with science fiction, but I slow to start yeah. with. <laughs> nice approach. Anyway, I, a couple of months later, after I'd talked to this lady in Southern California, the lady from Taiwan came to California. And they flew me down there. We had a chat back and forth through interpreters. And after that, we set up some international meetings. And um, you saw, by the way, how she was able to guess uh, how kids could read at an early age and which kids could not. Did you did you uh, understand her method? Did I understand her method? I tried. Hmm. But unfortunately, the language barrier really... Even though I attended two two uh, seminars in her in Taiwan, and I also uh, she attended uh, at least four or five of mine, I'm I was never able to get her books translated into English, so I didn't fully get granted. I learned a lot about them, and she learned for me because I had gotten my background was more in the behavioral systems. I think now I've got a reason to understand why there's slow learning. And I've just posted that on my new website, behaviorbio.com. And it has to do with, with fingerprints and with the fingerprints being, if you will, like windows on how the person perceives the way they, they, they're they going to take on life, if you will. It is their behavior characteristics. For example, they would uh, look at the fingerprints on the thumb and it might give you the characteristics of fight or flight. They'd look at the index finger and it would tell you a lot about how good of a planner they are. And that, the middle finger, where in their work in society would they feel Fit. Would they be a good team member? Would they be a leader? Uh, would they be more working on their own? A lot of things like that. I'd look at the, uh, the, the, the ring finger, which has so much to do with creativity, and you can tell whether the person is good at, at detail or whether they paint, paint with a broad brush. And then I would look at the uh, little finger, and I could tell a lot about communications. And... Uh, and then the fingerprints began to teach me more. Uh, I, I started, I started, I, I work out of the box sometimes when I'm reading people. And so I, I'll get an idea that, well, let me check this out. And so one day I was uh, checking on a, uh, a golfer. I found, found out he played golf. And he had a little bit of a mismatched fingerprint. I don't remember whether it was left or right, uh, was, was a whirl on the thumb, and the other was a, a, a loop, possibly. And so I, I asked him if he uh, if he hooked or sliced his, his tee shot. And he said, well, yes, he did. I thought it was interesting. So I, I followed that up. A, a, more recently, I followed up. It was, it was a just a slight difference in the two fingerprints, but it was, was noticeable. And I said, did you pull your, your golf shot a little bit to the left? And the golfer said, yes, he did. And I'm picking up these sort of physical traits of what's going on with a person by looking at their shots. And I would do the same thing with the basketball player. I say, do you shoot with one hand or do you shoot with two hands at free throw, free throw line? And and the, the good ones, you could tell if, the, if one hand had, had a, a particular print and another, the other hand had another different print, they would tend to shoot with one hand. If the prints matched, they would tend to shoot with two hands. And so it, something was happening, something that the print was telling me something was going on in the hand and in the mind. Uh, I just kept following it up. There's a, just, just asking silly questions like this. And I've gone in different fingers because it's not all a fight or flight. And then you run into uh, people with, say, they might have a, uh, 
a uh, arch on on say one hand and a loop on the other hand on their ring finger. Well, there's there's your creativity, but it also has to do with work product. You, so you, you I run into people creativity includes like throwing pots on the potter's wheel. And so it's a working creativity. And I would find that the people who had the, the uh, uh, heart, say, would have it on the right hand, well, they would enjoy baling hay, working out, working in the world, sweating, whereas they'd have the loop on the other hand, and they wouldn't enjoy that at all. They would enjoy uh, painting with a broad brush, but with the, not so much of the hard physical work. You're saying that the people with an arch, if I understand, in their right hand, in the right ring finger, since you're locating this conversation just in the ring finger, if they had an arch there, they would do more manual manual expression of their art uh, out in the world. But if they had a loop, they would have a different expression of that art? Yes. <laughs> and you would find us in... in, in, in each of the fingers so you could find now now what struck me and this has been more recently is the fingerprints are you could you can actually see them apparently by about the end of the second trimester in the womb they're there so this and and these relationships these Things, uh, the, the behavioral characteristics are there from the moment of birth. And that's what, uh, that's what Mary Lai from Taiwan was pointing out in her work. They were there from the moment of birth. And there are other people who've been that. I've talked to people in India and, and other places around the world that are into this. So, all right, you take this together and suppose you have opposing prints on the same finger in the hand. And one of the things I do now in my readings, I, I don't charge everybody reading. I, I have a, I have what's called a one finger free reading. Now, but I, I say, you pick the finger. I don't care which one you pick. Well, they'll pick one and they'll look at that finger on each hand. And I get an opportunity to compare. And so I, I can see more of what I'm actually doing. You got to remember that the, 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 the best book you can find out there to learn anything about hand analysis is the people you look at. That's right. They, they tell you more than anybody else can. So doing that, I've, I've been able to realize that we are potentially born with conflicts. So we can have a, you can have a, 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 a loop on one thumb and a, a whirl on the other thumb and one part of you wants to fight and the other, other part of you wants to be a good team player and a lover. They don't have the same thing. This is this teaches a, a great deal about uh, about the person right from the start. Well, all right, the child has to learn to live with that. First, they have to learn, as, as I've had to learn, that the hands do not necessarily deal with the same worlds. In other words, one hand might deal with, with, your, with your family and your loved ones. The other hand might deal with how your survival traits out dealing with the world your school, your work, this sort of thing. And one of the things I discovered was, all right, if you, you could be a competitor at work and you can be a, uh, a lover at home, if you're a student, you don't want to bring your homework home with you. You want to do the homework at a study hall or in the library or somewhere else. Because if you bring it home, you bring conflict into the home where the home is not ready for it, or you take the edge off of your work product. 
this shows up in, in each of these fields. So it's, a, it's a, something the child has to learn is where to, where to show these tendencies within himself or herself. And this is this becomes extremely important. And I think it's I think it's, it throws a whole new uh, uh, challenge to the whole field of psychology, psychiatry. And I think that's one of the reasons we find, like in my case, I have a couple of fingerprints that don't match, and that would have slowed up some of my learning ability, perhaps. Doesn't mean I won't learn. Doesn't mean I'm not. It doesn't, have don't have the ability to be smart it just means i had to learn some other factors before i could get there and it could get very complex because you have as, as you well know some prints are actually double or double prints or more like you have uh, arch worlds and arch loops and you have uh, uh peak, what they call peacock's eyes which are uh, which are a world loop well, that's a double, that's a double, if you fill a double window into the world. And so the person out of that finger is actually looking at maybe two. And if you put both hands together, maybe three or more windows into the world that they've got to learn to deal with. And so there would be that there's just so much time in this world to get hold, get control of these things. And you've got to have open up a lot of leeway to the child. And I can really understand how Mary Lai, in the way she was approaching it, and she does some things that I don't do, but how she could see uh, dealing with so many children that she has, and I, far more than I've ever dealt with, how she could uh, test and say, all right, this child will learn to read it, or this child won't learn to read till seven, and don't worry about it. Mm -hmm. And I thought, I can relate to that. Mm -hmm. And don't worry about it. That's a nice. Yeah. Well, this is, this is it. Because, oh, because you've got all these people out there thinking you've got the child's got to do this by this by this. And it's not the child is each child is an individual. And mm -hmm. you you can set the child up wrong. I had a, I had a recent, recently had a young lady who perfectly matched loops on all her fingers. And the first thing I could tell on that is she'd have she had excellent balance. Just that's a perfectly balanced hand, perfectly. And she did, she had excellent balance. She was, a she, her coach was excited by her balance. He was an ice skater and he wanted to get her out into competitive skating. He got her out. He put her into competitive ice skating and in, in racing. She lasted for about two years and had to drop out. All her fingerprints were loops. Loops are not competitive. They can actually get sick when they're put into a competitive, and she was getting sick. Now, she'd make a great member of the uh, Ice Capades uh, Ensemble. She had great talent, but it was a different way to use that talent. And so here was another reason to learn about fingerprints because you can learn about people and not to misplace them in places where they don't fit, where it's actually gonna make them ill if you put them into the, where, where you're creating conflicts in their life that they, they don't need. So when I think your friends have been heard, teaching me a tremendous amount of things. I've heard Ab Pascal Stussel sometimes refer to loops uh, in his uh, readings with as to have the, the person being so sensitive. It's like having Bambi in the middle of downtown New York. And if you have loops all over your fingerprints, that sensitivity means that you really are just gently reactive uh, to any of the trauma or any of the pain. So you really want that cherry Walt Disney life of love and connection and maybe even people pleasing through, through that. Well, to some extent, I have found, and it's good to look at it in the soccer field. I'll tell the one about the lady I read uh, 
she was in maybe early 40s, looked like she'd been a, an athlete growing up. And I said, did you ever play soccer or what you know in Europe is football? And she said, yes. And I said, can you see your hands? And I looked at her hands and I said, uh, you played, uh, you were a striker. And she said, yes. And said, uh, and you were, uh, you played center forward. And she said, yes. And then I said, but you were never team captain. And she said, I never wanted to be team captain. I got that from looking at four fingerprints. It was there, it was all, it was obvious. Now, what I found is loops are good team players and they will work well within a team. So you would find on a soccer field, although they won't be shooting, they won't be the striker, they make good halfbacks and maybe good football fullbacks. And I've often thought maybe the fullbacks and the uh, and the goalie might uh, might have arches, but I haven't checked that out yet. Mm. <laughs> so, I can see that. so I mean, these people they, they like to pass the ball around. They like to play as a team, but they 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 just don't want want to uh, want to take responsibility for making the goal. So if someone had in this example had a whirl on their right index finger or both index fingers, you would maybe put them as the team captain, right? Actually, I would use the middle finger. Oh, the middle uh, finger, yeah. The uh, middle finger, yeah, the middle finger. Team, the, 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 the index finger for me is more the person who is, is a planner. And I have those kind of worlds and I can, I find myself, I can't go through an hour without planning something. It's, the mind is always planning ahead. And other people, they have world, they have loops on their fingers, uh, those fingers, they're more spontaneous. They kind of, oh, wow, okay, let's go with it. That's interesting. So what do you, what do you make of the uh, a soccer player who has circle or whirls on both thumbs as opposed to? Well, that's, that was the person, right? That's what she had was whirls on both thumbs. And I said she was a striker and probably played center forward. Now, if she had it on just one thumb, she might play that side as a as, as a left fo uh, left or a right forward or, or <laughs> on the wing. Like literally, you're taking the the yeah. The, you you the can actually do that. Because <laughs> <laughs> that's the orientation, right? <laughs> yes, I I follow through, and that's that's the way I I, I find a person will in the golf shot will tend to. Throw the through, tend to uh, hook or slice their uh, their shot. I think, I, but there's other things in in the hand that I I also use too that uh, that are very important. Uh, like the headline, lifeline. Uh, what else do you use? Like I had a fellow recently. He had a very responsible position as a as a as a finance planner for a large organization. Mm. Fair enough. All right, where were we? We were talking about the uh, the financier. Yeah, yeah, and I looked at his fingerprints, and I could tell that he had a more of an artistic nature, and he was uh, also a little bit of a a little bit of a psyche. <laughs> and he is uh, a very interesting fellow. So, but the thing he had, he had very prominent uh, knuckles on the uh, proximal part of his thumb. They stuck out. Well, that's a person who has uh, clever hands. So I have, to, I have to give him some advice on what he can do today. I, I told him to go out and throw pots. I wanted him to get to using those hands again because he could begin to get in touch with himself by throwing pots. Hmm. And uh, I told him, could, and then I explained to him that 
that he needed to get out and do more with his hands and, 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 and learned that. And the last thing I told him to do was take a hot air balloon ride. <laughs> Of, but I, I wanted to get him break. I wanted him to break out of the box that he left that he left himself in, basically. And I, 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 I know I'm going to see him again because he he follows our our group, so uh, we'll follow through on him. But there's, a, there's, there's a variety of things you can do with the hand that seems so helpful to people. Yeah, you were saying that there are other factors you look in the hand. What are your favorite aspects of looking that you look for in the hand uh, when you are uh, and how you, maybe some original conclusions you think you found that other people haven't? Well, I don't know if the other people haven't because from, right, frankly, a lot of times when I discuss these things, oh, they'll, another promise will say, I know that. Hmm. Sometimes I do, do do discover things that others don't discover. I've been told, I was reading it out in Oregon, another state on the Pacific Coast in, in the United States, and an older uh, lady Thomas came up to me and was looking at several of our hands. And there is a, a prominent protrudence between the thumb and the index finger below the what they call the lifeline sometimes that sticks out very much and sometimes it's hollow and we were looking at one person and it stuck out very much on that person and she says oh that's the sign of the voyeur we're talking about the lifeline that comes right out here so yeah well there. right above the lifeline yeah right in there you watch for a protrudence there. Okay, like and, a line that comes out? No, right right up underneath the thumb. Okay. Right right above your finger. Okay, in the Mars region? Yeah. Yeah, in the Mars region. If that sticks out, that's a sign of the voyeur. That's, oh, that's interesting. So I, I started to use that. And, of course, the first thing, you what's the sign of the voyeur? The sign of the voyeur the sign of a person who learns through the vision. So then I took the opposite side of that, and that when you've got a hollow there, which you find on some people, they're more, more likely to learn auditorily. Hmm. There's just different different styles of, of what they needed to learn. A person has to see it to work it, or a person has to hear it to work it. Well, okay, I can do that. Well, the fruit, I was reading this lady in Spokane, and uh, I, I, sometimes I'm not careful with how I talk to people. And so I say, uh, I, she had this very prominent protrusion there. I said, oh, you've got the sign of the voyeur. She says, oh, yes. She says, I have two eight-foot mirrors on the ceiling in my bedroom. <laughs> you really have to watch how you, you never know what kind of answers you're going to get in readings. <laughs> Yeah. But it was a confirmation of yes, the person learns through visualization. And I found that time and time and time again. Uh, other things, it's learning. When I start a reading, I start from the backs of the hands. I don't start from the palm or anything. I haven't put their hands down flat on the, on, on the table. And I just watch the way they put them down. I'm, because I'm interested in the shape of the fingers and how they hold the fingers. And the minute I see them holding their little finger out, well, I know that they're not going to, that's right, you see that. They see that kind of finger out there, they'll, then I know, all right, there's a, this is a, a current condition. And the current condition is if it's in their left hand, they don't want anybody getting close to them. If it's in their right hand, they're going to hold strangers off. And when they let the hand, when they let it get closer again, well, then they're ready to be close to people. And you can spot that, yeah, like that. You can spot that immediately. And it tells you a lot about things. And it tells you people who can be in, in conflicts. 
For example, you can have the, the widow who will have her right, uh, her left hand, she's holding her finger out, and yet there are some markings, which they call in the marriage lines, but I, I don't call on that, but I do relate them to relationships. They can be dark. They can be almost black at times. Mm -hmm. And you know that she's still going through grief, but she's not going to let anybody get close to her. Hmm. So you certainly <laughs> so you, you can see the potential conflicts that are going on right at right at that very moment in a person's life. So what have you have you made a grand conclusion what the right hand means as opposed to the left hand? Only for my for my purposes, yes. As I say, I deal with I, I deal with well, let me go back a little bit. I'm always learning to speak to the person I'm reading. And so the words I use and the words I, I try to put together are words that are common words and commonly understood relationships. So I say, all right, the right hand is so much for me dealing with the world, dealing with the strangers, dealing with the dangers of that. And the left hand is dealing with the loved ones, dealing with the family, dealing with the home dealing with the protection of that. And that's that's basically, and there may be extended family. Or good friends might be included on the left-hand side. But those are the differences that I see in, in this relationships. Uh, it's a relationship thing. Hmm. And, and so if we look, for example, somebody who has eight worlds, right? Let's say that they have, let's just take that they have eight worlds on the right hand and they have a bunch of loops on the left hand. That's it. Then you're looking in general at somebody that is what for you? Well, uh, I don't know where we, how would you, well, you could have eight worlds on the left hand, on the right hand, but I think more like uh, five would be the, I'm sorry. Yeah, I meant eight worlds, but let's say four worlds on the right hand, four worlds on the left hand, and just leaning into the idea. I guess I changed my, my question mid-stride. Uh, so if you have four worlds on the right hand, generally speaking, when they're using that, what would that indicate? Well, it depends, it depends on what fingers. Well, let's say everything to me everything to me depends on where the where the print is not not just if they have it on the hand but it has to be on specific fingers mm -hmm. so all five let's just say all five just make in general as opposed if, to if you've got if you've got all well it's in, in 10 worlds if you have it on on both hands the old chinese thing is you're like a tree standing in the middle of the plane ready to be hit by lightning <laughs> You, you are very unique. And people I found with 10 worlds are usually very unique. I have eight or eight and a half worlds. And, but I don't have them on my thumb so much. A thumb, not on my right hand. My left hand is curious. I don't know for sure just what that fingerprint is. But that means that I can I can be good at uh, particulars. You take the world on the little finger. The little finger world is a, is a curious thing, and I've had a lot of fun with that. The curious thing about the little finger world is they have a problem keeping their mouth shut when things are wrong, when there's danger. They must speak up. They just have to have to speak up. And I've got them on both little fingers. And as a kid, I'd get in trouble with my buddies or with other people in school by being a nasty uh, school monitor. <laughs> I just, because I didn't know any better. Because that's what I was set up to do. What I've been able to find out, there are different herds, and this, this different opinion, uh, on the, on the studies of this, but I found in some of the different herds that there is a genetically bunch of animals in a herd that are set up to be the sentinels of the herd. 
and to warn the herd of dangers. Now, some scientists say, no, that's not a genetic thing, but I've run into others that say, yes, it's a genetic thing. And I think it's a genetic thing in humans, and I think humans are basically a herd animal. Mm, that's and a that, fascinating and that there are just some of us who have to do that. Now, there are other things that show up, but depending on where the loop is and, and its shape, uh, if it goes straight up the finger towards the tip of the finger, these people are lousy liars. They can't get away with it. Just difference. <laughs> now, this this begins to get you into a, a broader aspect, a social aspect of the whole thing, is that humans are very much of a, of a socially re, uh, reliant species. That we really do have to work as a society. It doesn't work any other way. And we have various, various ones of us are born to handle various areas. Doesn't mean one's better than the other. It's just that some are better at certain fields. Mm. So with your eight and a half worlds, uh, what have you concluded having loops on both thumbs means for you? I don't like to fight. Okay. So, and so you're <laughs> really saying that the thumbs are, whether if it's the left thumb being more family oriented and fighting or protecting the family, Versus right thumb, which is yeah. I fine. might still want to I might still want to win uh, board games and stuff in the with the left thumb, uh huh. And uh, when I played soccer or football, uh, I did play in the in the half field, uh, half backs, and I and on the wings. But that means you don't like to fight. What happens if you do? Let's say you're a you're a lawyer, so obviously. Oh, I know. Yeah, this is a difference. Now that's there's a difference, and that's probably why I have this curious finger on my left hand. My clients are like my family, and so I will fight for my family. But I don't like to just go out and pick a fight. I'd rather work with people, work things around. Mm. But yeah, I I don't necessarily like the fight. But if 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 you attack somebody I feel protective of, I will fight. So that means that if the reverse was true, and you ended up having circles on both thumbs and loops on the rest of the fingers, then you would you observe that that person is confrontational? I don't know, they'll fight, you can say that. And this, let me go, go a little further than that. It depends what kind of loop, I mean world, excuse me. <laughs> you see, worlds come in a variety of packages. Okay. You have, you have you have worlds that look like targets. You have worlds that are spirals. There are closed spirals and open spirals. Different types of worlds. I've one of the things that Mary Lai out of Taiwan would see is she found radio and ulnar spirals. Mm. And so recently I finally figured out how to come up with what would be a radio and an ulnar spiral. But this is something to be done in the future. But what I found with spirals is these people are, are fighters, but unlike the target uh, world who will come directly at you, it will make a tremendous boxer, be a, a Muhammad Ali or uh, someone like that. He could really come in and punch you right out or be a, 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 a rugby footballer or goes and hits you straight on. They'll be what we call in, in, in American football, a broken field runner. They'll go around the obstacles. They don't, they won't, they, they'll, they're out to win, 
but they're not out to just come straight into you. They're out to go around you. So not all worlds are going to be confrontational, but they're going to be clever. They're more, they, they figure things out. They, and they could be just fascinating broken field runners. And there, there you're talking about the difference between your locus of control, whether you are uh, really taking a targeted approach or expressing your, your, your dominion over circumstances. Yes. Yes. And you're and in in this example, you're talking about somebody with with a composite or a spiral whirl. Maybe you're just speaking spiral whirl. I'm not going to put words in your yeah. mouth. Spiral whirl is more looking at the circumstances, whereas the person with the bullseye is just looking in in a target. That's correct. That's interesting. <laughs> That's a I. I that is a, I've been wrestling with, I know that there's something to it. And, and what are you making of the composite then? Ah, well, that's a, the S shape. going. That's, on. that's a person who can reverse their field. They can be going one direction and all of a sudden be going the other direction. They're still, I think still like to win. It's, but we need a lot of this area we really need a lot more research yeah we really we really do and but it, but it, it what we're right what this teaches us is that the psychology of the way people react and act and things is far more complex than maybe we even began to think yeah, and you are speaking of something very uh, astute that we, that these fingerprints are showing the direction of a reaction and what is triggering that reaction based on the window or maybe limiting belief that that person has or whatever. If you if you say it's a window, then you're really talking about a belief, right? And there's kind of yeah, a belief, like that. a belief in each one. So. What would you? What have you concluded when the loop is going in one direction toward the thumb versus going the opposite direction away from the thumb? Oh well, the way and I, the one I always watch is is that's a very important fingerprint on the index finger. It's a, certainly I see it the most often in that place. Yeah, yeah that that is the, that is a, is I'm sure the most often. And of course, if it's going towards the thumb, uh, then they're very outward going, they're more spontaneous, that sort of thing. But if it's going the other direction, uh, they're a natural born caregiver. That whatever they're doing, they're gonna be taking care of somebody else in the in the process. They they just you find I find it quite frequently in, in people who actually work work in the caregiving. Now, I would say that that doesn't necessarily say cover surgeons who may need to have because they have to be planners would probably rather have worlds on those on those fingers. But but the nurses and the nurses aides and all of the others around and and the people in their alternative health fields and that you find loaded with these. Uh, fingerprints showing them to be caregivers. And so that that would suggest in that you have caregiving on the right in the outer world versus caregiving for your family if you're looking at on the left hand versus right hand if I follow your system of thinking. Yeah, that's, that can well show up. And vice versa, with caregiving on the family and rather than the outer world. Those, those those things do follow follow through. I've seen a high rate of people being victims of narcissists with that particular fingerprint. It seems to show up a lot around uh, their interpretation that some people are just so bullying or or so careless. So you could say, and that's their interpretation. It's obviously a value system that they're asserting against the world. 
Yeah. I don't know. I I uh, I don't I don't pick that up, but then I'm not not necessarily looking for it. A right. lot of things a lot of things that I'm picking up. I do frequently do readings of uh in the presence of friends and family. And uh that's where I get confirmation of what I see. A lot of the right. confirmation of what I see. It's an immediate confirmation. You get the shaking of the heads. And that's right. Yeah. Sort of things. <laughs> yeah, that's that's the best page of a palmistry book right there. Is when yeah. somebody that just goes, I don't know if that's a, and then they give you what their interpretation is. And that's that's why I I, I truly uh uh admire what your position is because it's coming organically. And that to me is worth more than any palmistry book. It's experience that makes the interpretations over and over and over. And each time it's like a, a rain that just makes an overall impression onto the concrete. You know, over a thousand, 40 years, you're starting to see over all of them in, in, in and you can't not be impressed with each reading. I agree with you completely there. That's 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 what gets me. That's that's what got me. I didn't I didn't have any belief at all in this when I started. But so, I've had so many things time and time and time again. People confirm it. They confirm it themselves. Their family confirms it. I had a one time I was over uh, out of town in Spokane, and I had a group of young men come by my booth, and uh, they were just acting up. And I, and I just for a kick, so I looked at this one boy guy. I looked at his hand. And I says, "Oh yeah," I says, "I know you. You, uh, you like to shoot the low percentage three point shot in basketball." And all his buddies were shaking their heads, yes. <laughs> he had that he had that extra long ring finger longer than the, the index finger by a good good amount. Eye risk taker. Eye risk taker. Gotcha. Of course he would. Yeah. And and let's say that they had a very uh, strong index finger and a low and a short ring finger. What would you uh, assert that to me? Well, that's a person's a low risk taker. And if they raise the bet in a poker game, I'm folding unless I've got a, <laughs> a royal flush or something. <laughs> <laughs> Have you, do you equate that with the testosterone and estrogen studies of the 2D, 4D study? I've seen some of those. I, 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 uh, I, I have mentioned them in some of my own writings. I, I perhaps they're true. So that the, in the womb, the, the child had more estrogen than uh, testosterone, or vice versa, depending on which way they looked at it. That's. Uh, it may well be true. I, they, they, I think in, uh, in my website, I think I even quote somebody who may have uh, made give some statistics or something on that. Well, what do you reckon? Re what do you reckon the tented arch is about? Since you've already commented on the arch being a little bit more manual labor, the, and the loop being more social, and the and the circle being, I guess, in general, a a more competitive feel to it. I think the arch, tenant arch is, of course, going to have some of the qualities of the arch, but a little bit more of a cheerleader. I like that. It's not my idea. It's somebody else's idea with a more of the cheerleader. But uh, they, there'll be a, something about them that I, there is something between, like the tenant arch is quite a bit like the loop and that goes straight up the finger. They tend to be very honest. To give you an example, the loop on the middle finger, which goes straight up the finger. These people cannot work with dishonest people. 
they'll get sick. Hmm. <laughs> they just it's it, and the, 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 I've had them time and time and time again. They repeat, yes, I had to quit that. I I can't do that. I can't work there. I just have to work with honest people. And I believe the tenant arch is very much the same way. I believe that they also have to have to work with a very honest people. And maybe 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 the fingerprint, if you would visualize it, you is like the center of balance. When you center it on the balance, everything has to balance from there. So there would be the there would not be any room for dishonesty. I like to think of looking at looking at the fingerprints. First time I, I started looking at fingerprints, I said they look like they look like to me like uh, universes that we see out in space going around and around and this sort of thing. And all of this, the patterns within nature that maybe have more, should mean more to us than we have given them credit in the past. Well, since you're talking about the universe, what have you uh, recognized as a difference between a whirl on the right moon region and this right over here as to one on the left? Uh, well, you know, I don't know that I've ever gotten seen enough of those to really make a difference. Uh, I, I've seen seen them, and I know the person has some remarkable intuitive abilities. <laughs> they just do. I can't explain it, but they just seem to have remarkable intuitive abilities, and it probably be would show up in the family or in the in the workplace. But it, it really does show up. There's so many. There's a lot of things. There are the headline gets a bad rap when it goes deeply into the moon and down into what's called Pluto area and that. And I think it's a bad rap. First thing I do when I see it going down that far is that you had flying greens as a child, didn't you? And I'd have been 90% <laughs> say yes. <laughs> And then I say, and you have out-of-body experiences in this period in your life. And I say, yes. And these people can do that. And, and uh, so this is this is a whole interesting area of the hand. It's it's not one you can, you don't want to talk about it in too many scientific areas because they'll say you're crazy and you're, you're just not. It's the quantum not field, you, but, right? Yeah. But uh, the fact of the matter is you run into people, person after person after person who does that. And if you've got the family around, they'll, they'll say, yes, they do this. And they know things before they're going to happen. And, and, and you can't explain it, but there it is. is there, do you have an explanation for timings? Or where do you, where do you land in being able to look at the fate line uh, and measure the timing as it crosses the headline, as it crosses the heart line, and what's your explanation oh. why that's even recognizably I, a phenomenon with hand analysts? Well, of course, if you've got a simian line, you're stuck, aren't you? <laughs> you've yeah, got to do it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that single line, man. Well, where, where is verse 30, 40, or whatever? Uh, I generally look at the, 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 uh, Headline is around, uh, oh, what, about 30 or so when I look at the, the, the art line is around 40 or so, but it's, it, it varies. I've got to make something, in, maybe a, the AIs will eventually figure it out better, but I haven't figured it out that well in it. But uh, it, you got to use a little Kentucky, uh, what we call Kentucky windage. You got to just get the feel for the for the person and that to get really good on what, on what Kentucky dating on wisdom? the line. Pardon? You call it Kentucky wisdom. Uh, windage. Windage. Kentucky rifles were the, one of the first rifles they used, and and of course, if you're shooting a rifle and you're you shooting long distance, you have to take into account the wind, because the wind will move the bullet. <laughs> so you've got to use a little Kentucky windage. I, I gotcha. <laughs> what, so we're going to be drawing a, a close to this amazing uh, 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 discussion. What do you think 
is the uh, uh, anything I'm particularly that you feel it, I'm leaving out, or and or also, what do you think about the impact regarding well, I think they, AI? I think they, I think we have to take this very serious now because now we have people like Elon Musk and perhaps others who are, who are planning on introducing chips into the brain. They say they're going to do this to help quadriplegics uh, connect with computers and their cell phones. And he's raised well over several hundred million dollars and has two places, one in, I think, Redding, California, and the other somewhere in Texas, which are doing this. Now, I don't think there's that big of a market for quadriplegics to get that. So I think he's looking at something a lot bigger and I can see where it can be used a lot bigger. But what I'm saying is it, all of these things, it, because they're there even before you're born and the fingerprints and that, you gotta find them somewhere in the brain possibly. And what are you gonna be touching when you start putting implants in the brain? You don't even know where you're touching and what you're touching. So this is an area that needs immediate attention from the whole academic and scientific world. We've, we've opened up, we've opened the doors, but now it's time they've got to go in and really do serious studies before, right. we start, before we start just trying to manipulate the brain when we really don't know what we're doing. So it's, it's reasonable um, that just in the number of years, Let's say within the next five years, AI. If it if these medical live, I, I think the medical what I've observed just from having having had this conversation with people that are doing medical research is that they have access to all the clients' records, and what they don't have is a marriage of all their biometric data with handprints. And fingerprints that's those are two different databases and when those two databases meet you're going to get fireworks it's going to be an explosion of information because it's it and who knows how ai will interpret that but guarantee it's going to be straight out of gattaca where you're going to be able to scan your hand and see your you're in 17 years at the rate that you're going in the pattern that you're going, you're going to be having diabetes type two or whatever. Well, you can see that just so much. I, I've already wanted to work with people who actually design uh, uh, scanners for a variety of different things uh, in the medical field. I, I, I look to the point where you can, you go every time you go to the uh, the uh, doctor's office, you get a scan, and they'll have base scans and then have other scans, and you. You'll be able to see things because I've, I've picked up things on, on, on health and all sorts of stuff in the hand. And you know the thing. It's there. We it's, had a lady come in to me one time and she had uh, just a redness down about the heel of the hand on the, on the uh, little finger side of the hand. And I said, you might be coming down with a uh, uh, problem in the lower abdom abdominal, uh, probably, probably maybe like UTI, uh, an early tract infection or something. Because it and was I down where? I, this is down here? Uh, below it, right down at the heel. Yeah, that right, right there? Yes. That's uh, your urinary and, tract. And, and over on the side. There, yes. All right. And, and she had it there. And I said, you might be coming down with a urinary tract infection or something of that sort. And she, I saw her two years later, she was up in Calgary. And uh, she said, you were right on everything you said to me until you said that. And I knew you were wrong until I went to the emergency room two weeks later. Far out. <laughs> there are things going on in the hand that we uh, can be so useful. I, I go to get into potential where sports injuries are going to show up. All this sort of stuff. You can see the weakness in the hand. You can see that. You can see other things. You can see where they, they have to watch their diet in certain areas in their life. All these sort of things. And that can be part of it. Well, you can first, you can put the, the, uh, the scanner in the office, but you can also put a scanner in the home. 
tied directly to your primary care physicians. Your, your whole health care system can be changed by this. Your education system can be changed. Your health care system, it's a different way of looking at society and what you can do as a social animal. It is. I think it's going to be unreal. Maybe the problem that I see more is not with the technical ability. It is the myopia of scientists that can't seem to get past that this is palmistry and and i have i'm i'm going i'll be speaking at the biohacking conference in sweden at the 10th anniversary and that's i'll be with hopefully some people in the crowd might be able to make a difference there but i, it will, I will always in be in that skepticism because that's the culture the the whole the the, the for some reason we have evolved as human beings, as our herd animals, to just dismiss this wisdom, and because it's been touted as, as uh, over the years, as misused, and they, probably for good reason. But there's it does it dismisses dismisses a very valid thread of real scrutinized work to try to vet with organic experience the truth of what hands reveal. Well, that's true. All we can do is just push like the devil, like my my new website, uh, behavebio.com, just trying to get the word out. I don't, I don't know. Uh, I've had Thomas object to my books because I, I footnote them and do all those other sort of things. So what are you doing all that? They're just wasting space. And, uh, no, I'm trying to teach the world. I'm not trying to teach Thomas. <laughs> Only I said, Thomas gets something out of my work. Great. But there are other people who need to see it too, like what you're trying to do. Get other people to look at things. Yeah, get it on YouTube. So what uh, you are, you are, you're right now. You're exploring the difference between a uh, a circle going one direction and a spiral going another direction. Have I you might be doing that? Yeah. Well, have you figured out what's your at least theory before we? And I can start. I can open my eyes to see if there's anything out there. I don't know yet. I just this is most recent stuff. I've just said I've just figured out how to how to describe a uh, an owner against the radio world. And I've only figured that out probably in about the last year. Oh, you mean a world that's kind of tilting a little bit more on the right side versus the uh, toward the thumb? No, it depends on which side of the hand that is the foot of the world. Like if you're talking about, what do you mean the foot of the world? The world has comes in from the outside. And the open end of the world is at the, what I call the foot of the world. Uh, okay, yeah. You, you you talk, gotta, are you talking about a loop? or Because a, uh, a, a world has two concentric feet, right? They're just sitting there like a, a window, um, like a mirror, right? It's just sitting there with Not two always. Feet. A lot of times they come from the same side. Oh, I understand. Yes. But sometimes it does do that. I recognize that. Yeah. yeah. And so, so you're saying it comes, it. Or it, yeah. saying it comes to the to the thumb. It, those, both feet are facing the thumb and it's coming that way. And yeah. then over here, what do you reckon of that? So it can go over the top or it can go underneath. Now, one way will be uh, counterclockwise and the other way will be clockwise. But that will not necessarily tell you whether it's owner or radio. Radio will tell you which way, like the loop or something, if it comes in from one side or from the other side. So those are, these are all features. That, that's so interesting. That I figured... At times, we'll, we'll probably end up within a fairly short period of time of dealing with up to a dozen or two dozen different fingerprints rather than just the three basics. Right. I, th I, I, I know that that's a fact. This has got to be like there's an absolute, you know, we, we're seeing it in such general terms. But I think that our, our telescopes right now can only see out to the moons of Jupiter, right? And but we're yeah. going to be able to get a hobble onto these things and make these 
more precise correlations. Like, for example, I, I see, you know, I've seen those uh, pretty random fingerprints on the ring finger. Uh, you know, you're, you're, you shouldn't be able to have, um, you, you can have composites that go like this, but then you have sometimes you get composites that are up on their ass like this, right? They're just completely... Yeah. And I'm like, that means something. I know it does. Yes. And I, the best I can say is they're a little bit imbalanced, but what, how, what type of imbalance? And being able to a ask the type of questions that would give that information, it, that, it, as, as, as Einstein said, once you understand the right question to ask, the rest of the problem is easy. It's just trying to figure out what's the right question. Well, uh a little bit on the same time. I think one of the things that's kind of opened up my mind to the, the wide variety of uh, things was dealing, I had uh, people coming to me with broken prints. They're just broken up. The bridge lines never form together. You've seen those probably. Yeah, it's like a gamut of different things that are just kind of. Yeah. So I had this lady came in and she was with her husband. And I said, uh, you walk into a room and not know any reason why you went in there? And he shakes his head. <laughs> yes, yes, she does. What you have there and what's happening is at the same time this is doing, your basal ganglia in the brain is forming. And it's possible that at that particular time, a lesion is formed in the basal ganglia and is reflected in the wing fingerprint. I'd love to be able to check that out further. Hmm. So what we may have is we may have certain formations happening at the at, at the time of the fingerprint that are causing these extra changes. And this is this is this is where a lot of the research is going to have to go. There, there's some exciting work that is not not directly correlated to the fingerprints, but kind of for core. And that is from Positive Intelligence by Shirzad Shamin. And what he's suggesting is that there are different threat mechanisms that we as all human beings go through and we react. Some people in a threatening situa situation, as you know, act more people pleasing, other people act more controlling. Other people get restless. Other people uh, act in a much more um, uh, hyper vigilant way, and other people get really, really like a stickler. I did. It, it's a. It takes. I can send the the survey over to you, and you can see what you are. But it's a very valuable way of being able to see the ratio of when you go into a stretch pattern. Are you going into a people pleasing pattern, or what? So that those patterns. He has linked directly to the uh, you know singulate cortex and a and a constellation of where each one is going and people go and he's like this is an absolute uh, fact it rooted in science that when people are in a stress pattern they go to a place of a position of safety whatever that position is. Now mm -hmm. I had everybody that I know well, I'm leading a couple groups and I said uh as well as i audited somebody somebody who happens to know this the system and i had them take the test and i looked at the hand to try to guess is this a guy a stickler or is he a controller based on the big thumb or a stickler because he's got a straight headline or is he restless because he's got short fingers and crazy lines everywhere so it, i nailed it <laughs> i nailed every single one of them so that's important because that means that there is a correlation. If A equals B and B equals C, then A equals C. You can be able to thread these type of systems to the brain and be able to make those correlations. And we need more of those type of things happening with fingerprints in other areas. And then, of course, have people make these assessments and people with experience make their, make these type of guesses. And if they do match at a, at a rate broader than random, then we know that there's something to it, something, and it should be looked at. Great. Hopefully. Yeah.
Yeah, that's right. Well, Ed, uh, we, we'll close this. I think it's been a phenomenal uh, conversation. And I, and I think that to the hand analysis community, if you're watching this, please also take the respect that that uh, for this gentleman that I've been reading, as well as the respect for other people who are in your field, who have been working at this, whatever their case is, whether you might have a feeling about whether they're whether their interpretation around the left index finger means doesn't match yours, you must uh, uh, give the person respect for their voice because it is valid. They have an, a valid experience and it needs to be understood. And we come together as a community of people to understand these views, thrash out and lean into that conflict because that conflict is what we get, the resolution, the creative ideas that help us sy synthesize a, a common output. So with wisdom, with respect, Ed, again, thank you for your dedication. Uh, I get chills uh, being able to connect with you. And I, I am very, very grateful for the time that you've given me today. My pleasure. Thank you.